Thank you and David. And yes, you too, Brad. Uh, you good? All right. Well, I'm so, thanks for agreeing to this interview. You're welcome. My pleasure. Well, uh, so I guess, what are, uh, what are you working on right now? I'm working on a few different projects. Um, since this is a video game panel, I'll start with that. I'm doing um, three different projects for electronic arts, and um, unfortunately I'm, I'm under a non-disclosure agreement, so I can't say the names of them. Um, but I've, I've done a, a good run of projects for, the, for the, their Chilingo division yes, this year. You know, I mean, the Woody Woodpecker game I mean, I um, came out earlier this year. It was an iPhone game for the week. Uh, Very nice. And the um, controversial game that I did was the uh, <laughs> iPad game of the year last year from the, in Apple's okay. iTunes okay. store rewind. Yeah, so and I can shoot 10 different countries around <laughs> Europe and Asia. So I'm pretty excited about, about all the game work I've been doing. Yes, I know, I do feel like I'm bragging, but my, but you know, my, thank you, I appreciate that. My, 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 I am told I'm supposed to, you know, be proud of what I do, so I'm, I'm really proud. So, I'm, in addition to that, I'm, I'm working on some TV shows as well. I just finished the first season of a show uh, for SeaWorld, SeaWorld's first TV show. It's called Sea Rescue, it airs nationwide on ABC. Uh, we're going into the second season this fall. Um, so those are some of the things, and I'm doing other things as well. Of course. No rest for the way. Right. Exactly. Uh, I guess so. Uh, what's the process you have for the process for judging of the scores is an interestingly phrased question. Um, so for each project, I'll sit with what the mood and the feel and the vibe is of the whatever is needed to come out of the TV show. And I'll let that inform me on a, on a basic level. For me, music is about evoking an emotion. And if you miss that, then you kind of defeated the purpose. So getting inside of the feeling and the mood is step one in terms of conjuring. So I conjure up the emotion first, and then once I have that, then I, I think through how, what, what kind of genre or instrumentation or palette. Um, is it a song? Is it a lyrics? Um, if it's score, is it more orchestral like John Williams, or is it more of a, a hybrid approach like Frank Reznor does, or, or what is it? You know, I, I'm, I, I become a kind of composer that I, I do my best to have a pretty wide range of styles and genres. Um, although I've, I've been told it's better to have one sound that you do really well that you're famous for, like Danny Elfman. Um, and everyone goes, ah, get me Danny Elfman because I want this sound. And I, don't, I don't have that yet, where it's like, give me this guy, he's got this great sound. Um, but maybe someday I'll have that. But right now I have to just do the assignment as, as, as it's presented to me. I hope so. I've been doing it over 20 years, so I hope I'm beyond yeah. square one. Is there like a preferred you know, like more digital or classical acoustic? Um, in terms of instruments and sound, um, I grew up loving music by bands like the Beatles and Pink Floyd and whenever I have a chance to make songs like that that really are, sound like the records I grew up listening to, I'm pretty excited. Um, I've done a lot of composing and scoring where I, I'm doing things that are more orchestral or more filmic and that's very fun too. And I, I, I did also grow up listening to John Williams and uh, I love what he does and, and that's, that's very fun too. Yeah. Well, yeah, we kind of brushed on in the last one, so I'm uh, going to have a Any influences on your work? Um, well, we did just brush on that, didn't we? Uh, so... Here. 
Drive. Oh, no. In addition to those guys, I, I did grow up being classically trained on the piano and studying. I have a degree in music composition from UCLA. I have a lot of classical composers that I love, you know, from Beethoven to uh, more modern composers like Debussy and Ravel. I'm a big fan of. Uh, well, everything. The only thing I have officially. If you listen to, to like, scores by composers like John Williams and other guys who are classically trained, you, you hear a lot of the influences uh, from, from the great composers. I, I, I always tell people if you really want to learn film scoring, study the great classical composers. Study Stravinsky and Tchaikovsky, and you'll you'll get the same training that the guys who have got. It's probably going to be playing on screen. There's probably going to be girls dressed up like a horse. And, uh, you know, and. So, uh, what got you into video game music? I don't know what it is. 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 Well, so I, I decided to study music composition in college, and so I was very fortunate to do internships with a couple of big composers for film, Danny Elfman and Mark Isham, while I was in college, and, and I'm very fortunate to have done that, and it, it really helped me segue into pursuing that on my own. And um, let's see. Anyway. What was the second half of the questions? Uh, well, really, it just comes down to what got you into music. I just loved it. Well, you know, yeah. 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 That's how I push that on the table. Yeah, no. No, but it's funny. Well, uh, what was the first gig you really got to where you were doing all the scoring? Um, I was just doing all the scoring. Um, a lot of music, including like Well, and so there's this I had done a few different gigs where I, I had done some music and gotten credits, additional music by. Uh, I actually have a lot of credits as a music supervisor. Uh, and the first project where I was doing all of the scoring for it was when Fox first launched the Fox Family Channel in 1998. They were looking for a show that they thought it would really be a family-friendly, fun, quirky show. So they, uh, I don't know if you remember this character named Mr. Bill from Saturday Night Live. Uh, Emily's shaking her head, yes. He's, 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 a, he's, he's made out of clay, and he goes, oh, no! And um, so they did a Mr. Bill show, and so I did all of the music for this show. So that was the, the first show that I composed all the music for. Yeah. Oh, that's a heck of a sucker. It was fun. I can imagine. Very quirky. Oh. 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 What was your favorite? Uh, okay. What's your favorite project thus <laughs> far? Wow. Um, let's see. I really loved doing the uh, series of theme songs that I've done recently for Marvel. The, the theme for the Avengers TV show that is on Disney XD. Um, a couple of theme songs for a series of motion comics that Marvel did. Uh, Astonishing X-Men. That, that was a Joss Whedon project. Um, the uh, uh, Iron Man Extremis. I, uh, I, I did a song where I, I was lucky to have the singer from Toadwitz, Rocket, Glenn Phillips, sing it. It's, uh, it came out great. So on the song side, that was very fun. And, and on the score side, I have to say that this little contra jour game is really a wonderful project. I'm really proud of it. I get a lot of fans reaching out to me saying they love the music. I released the soundtrack on iTunes. It's actually selling well. And it's, it's pretty simple piano music, pretty classical. But uh, it just really has gotten a lot of appreciation from the fans. So I'm grateful for that. That even let me have a shot at it. You know, uh, uh, how do you feel being uh, music and games has evolved over the years? I mean, you've gone from like you know, the, the Magna Box to the Nintendo, to the Super Nintendo, to the Mario Kart. It's, it's funny. I mean, there's sort of an irony to me a bit about game music at this point because game music can be anything. It's just an audio file just like you download from the internet that's now in, in games. 
so you could record a live orchestra, which I've done. I did, I did music for a game called Star Trek Starfleet Command, and this was over 10 years ago, and we recorded with a live orchestra, and, and that was wonderful. Um, and so what's kind of ironic to me is sometimes I'll be asked to make music that sounds like a game, even though it, I, there's no restriction anymore just because it sort of like is in our mind like this is how a game should sound and, you know, I, I've been doing a string of these mobile games and, and the benchmark is definitely the Angry Birds uh, game uh, which I think has sold over a billion downloads in all of its forms some ridiculous number like that and, and the company that was the publisher of that game is the Chilingo division of Electronic Arts. I do I do a lot of work for them, and um, it's interesting how often that Angry Birds game comes up in conversation. So I, I did one project uh, called Coco Loco, and uh, the game is actually selling pretty well. And I did a piece of music for it, and I said, "Well, that sounds too much like Angry Birds." And the, and the game kind of felt like Angry Birds to me. So I, okay, so I went away from Angry Birds. Now I'm doing a new game for them. I'm not allowed to say the name, but they wanted something that sounded kind of nautical like pirate music so I did something that was pretty legit kind of like a if you know like what, what kind of like sailors would sing you know a, a sea shanty kind of thing you know, like those are good so I did when I was really proud of it like I thought this is a great piece of music and, and I sent it to them and they said well we wanted to sound more cutesy like Angry Birds so I had to cutesify they actually literally said can you make it cheesier Ooh, that's like the thing that that's like the worst thing. Like, really, it's almost like somebody saying, "Can you make your music um, more bad?" Like, this is yeah. this is you know. I have to agree that it's kind of like you know, you get a cancer, you know, like a really great score, and they said, "Do you want to go more like monkey?" Ass. You're right. Exactly. Yeah, we wanted a little kind of more cartoony and younger. And, okay, you know, I mean, and this is kind of like what we were talking about earlier, like. You know, I, I don't get to choose what the assignment is. I get, you know, it's like, here, I get handed the assignment. It's almost like doing homework. Like, here's your assignment. You know. <laughs> so it's it's all fun. I I'm, certainly can't complain, you know, or I shouldn't. Um, yeah, it's kind of hard to complain about it. Yeah, I'm not a pretty good uh, uh, I might as well lead on to this one, one of the more obvious ones. Favorite games? Um, favorite games? Well, um, gosh. I've been playing a lot of the mobile games. I've been working a lot with the mobile games, and uh, I really, I, I really do think that the Angry Birds game. It is pretty amazing what they did with it in terms of mobile games. It is pretty amazing. Yeah, you know, um, and I, and I, I think it really has set the benchmark for that whole genre that everyone's trying to be the next Angry Birds. You know, um, and um, what what else? Um, I think there are a lot of uh, good, good games out there, you know. Um, <laughs> it's tough to kind of narrow them down, so I think I'll, I'll, I'll just pass on trying if that's alright. You know, that's a question. Next year, if I land the game, I think it's one of those really hard questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, uh, yes, sir, Together a uh, little video. You can tell people that I have a you know, Facebook page if they want to learn more about my projects. It's facebook.com slash David R. Leon. And um, that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks. All right, thank you. I'm so happy to be Spider-Man. Are you, um, yeah, I, 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 just out of curiosity, no, I just plan to put something up on YouTube. Uh, we are, yeah, the video we probably will put up on YouTube. The, okay, this is where things get interesting.